All right, in the previous lesson, we introduced the major axis method, which allowed us to provide a key to the major axis that basically allowed pandas to focus on the other two axes of the uh, panel object, which were the items axes and um, the minor axis. In this lesson, we'll look at an alternative approach. So we'll be using the minor axis method to basically provide a value for that uh, focus, that axis, so we can cut it out and focus on the other two, which is going to be um, the major and items axis. So let's begin by re-executing our code. And once again, the output below the cell will help us get a better understanding of what it is exactly that we're doing. So in order to return a two-dimensional data frame, we basically need to cut out one of these axes to make it representational with rows and columns. Now, which one we do is up to us. If we want to cut out the items axis, we can provide the square bracket and provide a value to use for the items axis. It's basically going to cut it out and give us these two in the resulting data frame. In the last lesson, we talked about the major axis method, which is where we provide a key or a value to use for this axis. So it can basically throw it out and focus on the other two axes in the data frame, which is going to be the items and the minor. And finally, predictably in this lesson, the minor axis method uh, accepts a input from the minor axis values and it cuts this component out so that the data frame can focus on the items and the major axis axes. So of course, we can always begin with the complementary uh, attribute to find out what options we have to work with. So the minor axis method has to expect a value from the minor axis and we can find those values by doing minor underscore axis. And that's going to give us an array or a list of all of the valid values in the minor axis in our P panel object. So whenever we call our method, which is going to be minor axis, and again, the spelling here is different, so watch out. Here we're using XS, the attribute has the full axis spelled out. The value that this method ex expects is one of these five. If it doesn't, it's going to get an error. So for example, if I provide MSFT, it's going to select that as our minor axis value, going to give us a data frame. And now you can see that the major axis stays in place. The uh, major axis in our original panel, of course, was the date time index. So you can see it's represented here. And now we have the items axis from our um, panel represented here as the columns. So this is basically a swap with the default brackets extraction. And now instead of column headers that represent the, co the company names, which were the minor axis, we now have column headers that represent the items axis open to volume. So we've basically cut out that minor axis and now because we've cut out one of those three dimensions, we have two left and we can represent it as a two-dimensional data frame. Similarly, if I want to uh, show another example, once again, I'm going to use my P uh, variable for storing my panel object. The method is called on that. The method is called minor axis, minor excess. Open my square, open my parentheses rather, and my double quotes. And again, the value that has to be fed in here as the argument is going to be something, some value that exists in our minor axis index. So one of these values. And again, we can use the complementary minor axis attribute to find out what those values are. So uh, let's say we put in something like Goog, now it's going to return the exact same thing. We have our major axis, which is our date time index represented here. And now we have our panel items axis represented as the columns of our um, data frame. So let's just buy ourselves a little bit of space by calling the head method here. And of course, uh, just predictably, just to showcase in case we put in a value that does not exist like ABCD, we are gonna get an error. So watch out for that. Always confirm that the value exists in the minor axis attribute. So there we have it. So just to conclude by doing a general review, whenever we have a P, or whenever we have a panel object, in this case stored in P, if we want to extract something uh, and cut out the items axis, we have to give it a value from items, such as open, which is our first value here. That's going to cut out the items axis and give us the major and minor here on the row level and the column level. If we want to cut out the major axis, we do major underscore axis and give it a valid value from our options among the major axis. So let's say I choose this date, the very end. That has to be a key, something from the major axis. And that's going to cut out the major axis and leave us with the items axis and the minor axis. And finally, we have minor axis and that accepts a value from the minor axis, cuts that out. 
So basically, if I specify Yahoo, it's going to take this part, basically cut it out because it knows it's working with Yahoo. Now it cuts out one of those dimensions. It's left with items and major, and that's going to be the two that are going to be represented on this data frame. So as you can see, we have three different ways to present the values within our panel. We have three different combinations that we can do of these three items together. We either have items and major, major and minor, or minor and items. And all of these different ways just represent different ways that we can slice and dice it to get the exact data frame that we're looking for, depending on what criteria we want to filter by, either the items axis, major axis, or the minor axis. So again, pretty complicated here. Um, I think the big picture here is, is easy to understand, but the syntax and kind of remembering what each method does gets a little bit tricky here. My only recommendation here for memorizing this and practicing it is just to remember to use those attributes that are available to you. Uh, if you want to extract from uh, the items axis, use items feed that to the square brackets. If you want to extract and remove the major axis, use the major axis attribute. Use one of these arguments to the major axis method. And if you want to remove the minor axis, use the minor axis attribute to get the list of available values here and feed any one of those to the minor axis method. So uh, take some time to practice this a little bit. And then there's still plenty of stuff to dive into with the PANA's uh, panel object. So I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.